Sitting around the ballroom, they're talking about tomorrow when they're taking Johnny away. Said he wasn't no good, they were done with things that he should. That's all the judge had to say. He went in the army when he was 18. Crazy young Irish and me. Took a kid who was half gone all the way to be wrong with bloodlust and them 16s. All right, we're back. Danny, how we doing? We're alive. <laughs> By the skin of our teeth. Bailey. Uh, had a weekend. Yeah, and I didn't even do anything remotely to my body yesterday. That's no. how bad I'm still hurting. Well, let's just let's put it this way: if you watch it on YouTube, you can see I drank a choice that I ate. <laughs> Coca Cola, mini Coca Cola, fucking mini Coca Cola is like we're in the hospital, basically. Yeah, like, that's what they give you when you're in the hospital. Shasta ginger ale. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a mini Jello and a mini Coca Cola. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I regret nothing. No. It is what it is. This it is the life a, we chose. Yeah, it's, it was a good one. How yeah. was your weekend? It was great. I mean, we, I got after it. Like I said, I, I had that gig on Friday night. Yeah. At uh, Irish Brewing Boston. Yeah. No free ads. Free ad right here. My brother, unrelated, Paula Hearn, who runs that place. Uh, Maggie's whole family came out. A bunch of guys. Uh, Barry Canavan, who's a big pulling the court guy, donated yep. extra money to Tim's thing. Yep. Um, he was there with his wife. Uh, great folks. Lots of, a few people came out I hadn't seen in a long time, so it was awesome. Played a bunch of tunes, drove home on an absolute fucking monsoon. Mm. <clears throat> I was like, it was like castaway, like me in the car. Like Friday night or Saturday night? Friday night. Yeah. And it was like coming out of the South Shore. It was, I hadn't driven in rain like that in a long time, um, especially at night. Luckily, I'd only had like three beers, probably. Yep. Um, and yeah, check them out, by the way. Irish Spring Boston. Um, their just, tap room is fucking unbelievable. It's just, just like the best garage by you. You just got me a sick shirt from that dude. Shirt is fucking sick, dude. It's flames. Show the people. Yeah. Show the people. Show the people at home. Uh, anyways, check them out. Southie Light is their like canned beer. Yeah. I have some in the fridge, but we agreed that we'll crack those next week. Yeah, that's fine. Right. We're taking the week off of uh, imbibing, me and you. Um, and then Saturday night, I just had a ripper, so it was, you know. I, I don't need to give you the details, just, you know, yada, 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 100 beers, 3.30 in the morning. I don't even want to talk about my week. Yeah, exactly. You know what it's, I mean? It's like, fine. It's, it's fine. Sometimes it's best left in the rearview mirror. You know what I mean? It's just a lot of, uh, lot of nonsense. A lot of nonsense, a lot of fun, but like... I, got a, I had a blast. Yeah, sometimes, you know, when you turn a guy like you and me on sometimes, like yeah. the Energizer Bunny, it was uh, it's hard to get the, to have that person that that bunny likes to beat the drum. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. They keep clicking around. Absolutely. That's kind of like our situation. But um, we had to talk about it. Yeah, we had to talk about it. We had to live about it. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about the the world. You know? Yep. Um, couple things I wanted to mention real quick. Oh, shout out to my. I'll tell you one thing. I I would like to talk about my uh, spirit animal. My nephew. My godson. Eamon Judge, Steve's son. Yep. Steve Judge's son. Uh, Love that name. Rocks around way. fucking with his gut hanging out, no shirt on, dances balls off all the time. Yep. Absolute legend. Got a, like, $25. By the way, when we were kids, I, well, I mean, you're a lot younger than me, but baseball cards were, like, a couple bucks. Mm-hmm. But that came out, it was, like, four bucks or something right. like that. Baseball card backs to $25 now. What? Now, listen, but here's why. And this is going to get, we're going to talk about the lottery tonight. So this is going to get into Are you saying a pack of baseball cards is 25 pack bucks? A pack of these type of baseball cards. Now, here's why. He pulled a card. They scratch tickets, basically, right? Yep. So, like, you get a, you can get a regular deck and, like, you know, say the deck costs 25 bucks. Maybe your cards are worth $9 or whatever it is, right? By the time you get everything out of there. Right. But just like a scratch ticket, he got one of the packs that, like, you don't know. He pulls it. It's got a big, fat card in it. It's got the player. And then it's got a piece of his uniform Jersey. that he wore yep. for that game, like, embedded in it. And it's fucking big money. It's worth seven hundred fifty bucks. Shit. Yeah. No shit. Who's the player? I can't remember, but I said I don't know anything about baseball. Anyways, it wouldn't matter if, unless it was like Aaron Judge. I wouldn't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah. You know. Um, but I like was like, I was like, hey, I got I got good news for you. I just listed on eBay. We're gonna split the profits, fifty <laughs> fifty. You know what I mean? Hook it up. Everyone like, wins. Yeah. He's like absolutely not. But the kid had a new drip. Had his new. Uh, he's got like a silver catcher's mitt for a for a chain. Yeah. Yeah. Just looking like a pimp. So happy birthday to Eamon. Okay. Uh, we had a good night there, and uh, yeah, so here we are to tell the tale. Monday, I'm feeling like a human again. Yeah. Monday night, you know what I mean? We're back. We're back. A um, couple news pieces I wanted to bring up. Please. You see Pete Davidson has now been spotted with his Emily Ratchowski <laughs> chick. You know how much it 
it pains me to like. <laughs> he still wins, dude, and I can cannot stand him. <laughs> Asshole eyes. I don't like him either. Um, I, I get no, I get no love for that guy. And there's something about a guy who gets tons of top grade ass that like who's like not an attractive looking. Yeah, human. like and like I mean, John Mayer at least is a good looking guy. He plays the guitar, right? Um, and sings like a bitch, but that's all right. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. No, no, I, was... I don't know where I was going with it either. I was trying to just make sure I don't get canceled in this fucking society we're in. Um, but he does. He sings like a bitch. Um, but like, I saw the best tweet on the the thing from a random guy. It was got like two likes. Yeah. It was under the thing, and the guy goes, he, <laughs> he goes, Pete Davis has got to every end boss in the game. <laughs> like in the video game. He did. <laughs> dude, he's like just a fucking murderer. Dude. And it pisses me off, but he's, like. He, he has to be, like, listen. And I know everybody's like, well, obviously he's got a huge dick. Has right? to, right? Yeah, that's fine. But like, like you gotta have the game to carry that too. Yeah. Like you can't just be like, like there's tons of guys with huge dicks out there. Right. Just the fucking losers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he has to have like a fucking great like way with women. But like I can't see it. I watched that movie on a on a flight, King New York or whatever. What yeah. King of Staten Island? King of Staten Island. I didn't like it at all. I didn't even watch it. I, I mean, like I and then like I watched his SNL shit. Not remotely funny. No. I don't get it. Yeah. Can he cook? Can I, he, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that it's like one of those things. I, I always thought this was John Mayer, too, where it's like, I think that once you've dated a couple, like, absolute gas cans, yeah. girls get curious. Like, what is this guy yeah. got going on that, like, is so great? You know what I mean? Speaking of beautiful women. Oh, here we go. Jennifer Aniston's dad no longer with the company oh, today? Oh, no, I got something else for you. But, but Jennifer Aniston's dad is no longer with the company. It's true. Yeah. Laid off for life. Laid off for life. <laughs> he has been given his last check. Yeah. <laughs> Sent into the sky. Yes. Uh, uh, but he was, like, big on, like, a, um, a soap opera. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Like, I, my, I had no that's idea. That's something my mother would have known. She, sure. she would have loved that, that shit. But uh, he made one of the hottest women on earth. Dude, I mean, Great she sperm is, out of that guy. She is, like, give me her mainliner into my veins. Yeah. She is so... Goddamn classy. I know. And gorgeous. Like, she I used to have this thing. She like, don't I don't miss. Know, um, yeah, she doesn't miss at all. Uh, she's absolutely unbelievable. Okay, let's talk about another beautiful woman. Who, like, I actually, I'll have to say this. I don't, like, I, I can tell you, like, here's a, here's a woman that I think is, like, smoke. Here's one that, I'm, you know, everybody's got their own choices, right? Yeah. Of what they like or whatever. Um, I'm not, a, I've never been a big Giselle guy. Like, I've never been, like... Oh. Don't like, get me started on this fucking pig. She's a fraud. Fraud. Dude, now, I want to say that I'm on record as calling Tom Brady a complete piece of shit fraud, yeah. right? A couple weeks ago. Yep. Maybe even last week. Uh, I think it was actually a few weeks ago. But I did say this. I qualified it by saying if there's one man that I believe can fucking fly out of the flames, like that he is plunging into. He's undefeated right now since the divorce. Listen, I texted all my guys on fucking Sunday. I go, Tom looks crisp. Tom's right coming now. back. And... Paul Gentile is so fucking mad. Tom might end up with Jennifer. Dude, that would be a perfect pair. Oh, my that, Lord. And that fucking pair. Uh, He's just hugging her. So she's know. out with her jujitsu trainer. Yep. Getting deep fucking dicked. Yeah. Like, in Costa Rica? In Costa Rica. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we don't know what Tom's been doing, but, like, business is, as business, what is it? What does Bill say? Uh, do business as business is being done? Mm-hmm. Like, so, I mean, he's, he's, on, he's concentrated on the fucking season right now. I'm telling you right now. He's gonna fucking he's gonna make a run at the Super Bowl. Everyone on Earth, and myself included, was like, "Buddy, you should have stayed retired." He had the wor- he had the worst beginning of his uh, season ever, dude. I, he reminds me of a guy I used to uh, a guy that I was pretty close to at one point. He's actually at my wedding. We don't really talk that much anymore. We kind of had a little bit of a falling out, but I have always said this about this kid. I'm like, I can't stay mad at him. Yeah, I just can't. Like, I love him, but he's fucking horrible sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but I'm like, but I, you know. He's just like, I think well, we all got guys. friends like that. Yeah, but like Brady's like that for me. Like all of a sudden I looked at him again. I'm like, oh man. Kinda he rails you right back in. <laughs> I fucking love he rails you right back in. Yeah. I mean, like, I'll be, if he goes to the Super Bowl, I'll be in here fucking cracking stick. Like just going fucking nuts. <laughs> Tom, 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 Tom. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Mac Jones, who? You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Um, anyways, it does suck during the Super Bowl season, though, when the Pats are on the bye. It just sucks. Yeah, it's not. Like, even if the Pats aren't that great, which they aren't that great this year, right. it's still like, your weekend kind of revolves around it. Like, Tommy, now that he's watching, he's, like, one of the pats on him. Like, they're right. by. It was, like, I told him that, like... He's not going to like the next couple of weeks either because don't we have Thursday night games for, like, the rest of the fucking season? Yeah, which sucks. <laughs> which sucks. He'll probably stay up for the first half. Yeah. Um, yeah, just Thursday totally Thursday night games blows. blow. Dude, and it sucks, and it's, like... That's you know, right up there with, like, NFL Europe. It drives well, me fucking crazy. It's a, and you know what? This is when I knew I was getting old this year, last year. Right? I mean, I know I'm old, but 
is that uh, when, a, when the Celts were in the finals, yeah, I was always been the biggest Celts guy. Like, a couple of games where I went to bed at, like, halftime, and I'm like, they start a fucking nine. Yeah. And, like, I had shit to do the next day, and I'm like, I can't. They got to play the game without me, you know what right. I mean, with, without me. And, like, I'll, I'll watch, you know, watch tomorrow night or whatever, especially if they're getting beat, but... Um, it just sucks. Yeah, the, the, West Coast, the West Coast games for basketball suck. Monday night games are the worst. Yeah. If you have Monday night game, it fucking blows. Right. And like, even if you don't drink, you're just tired as yeah, fuck. You, you know what I mean? Exhausted, it's like, of course. Anyways, um, yeah, it sucks. I mean, my buddy actually who lives over an island, like him and his like crew of guys over there, they they are like NFL fans. So yeah. like a couple of years, they watch the Pats like at this guy's house. He's like, dude, I was walking home at seven in the morning because that's when it's over there. You right. Know? I mean, basically. And like the last couple that they were in, he's like, I can't do it anymore. He's like, I, he's like, I DVR'd it. I'll get up in the you morning. Might well, fucking, you might as well just fucking record it. At yeah, that point. he's like, I can't, can't fucking do it. You know. I watched um, a few, um, and again, you want to talk about fraud, but I was there for more like the the crowd than anything because it was a big fucking soccer game. I couldn't tell you one rule of soccer other than offsides and the clock goes backwards. But <laughs> the, I went over there. Uh, I went with my buddies to watch a game at like fucking six in the morning. And it was a great time. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But I had no, I, I don't even know who played. Sure. But yeah, like yeah. to wake up like that, you know what I mean? So I don't know if I could do it. Like, but they, it was a big game. They wanted to watch it. I'm friends with them. And that's what I went there for. Dude, but. I went one time with, uh, it's funny enough because not that the, I, this kid doesn't listen to the show, I don't think, but you know who he is. But uh, I think I've actually told you the story. But my Nate, his brother in law, is from England. Yeah. And uh, Sam Jones, he's a fucking legend. It's awesome. And uh, he's like, do you want to go to Lear and watch Arsenal play? Because he was like a massive Arsenal guy. Like yeah, and he brought that kid, that kid from the uh, the breakfast sandwich page, Billy Sylvester kid. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> uh, he was there, and uh, yeah, it was like I was fucking awesome though. It was like, dude, it was packed. You right. know what I mean, the thing that threw me off was that like I was like, I have a Guinness. Like we don't stop serving till I forget what it was. Like, it was like ten thirty or eleven or yeah. something like that. So it was like, and it was like nine forty five. I'm like, so I'm supposed to sit here and fucking drink orange juice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Minutes, you know, I can't. Be um, but it was cool, you know. But yeah. I'm like, it's like it's like I said with friends, like I. Like, I gotta really like you to make to make a new friend these days because like I got enough friends. It's like sports. I got enough sports to watch where I don't sure. need another one to add to yeah. the fucking list. And I know? have zero desire to watch soccer. No, nah, I'm good. I'm all set. I'm all set. It's fine. You know what I mean? Um. Anyways, we're gonna talk about the lottery tonight. I can't wait. I mean, it's been very topical lately. Sure. With the Powerball going to two billion. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I am a gambler by nature. Mm-hmm. I've discussed this on the on the show. I've been doing football cards since I was in the seventh grade. I've been scratching tickets my whole life. Uh, we just scratched a couple here. We just, we just so in honor of this <laughs> show, I bought two ten dollars tickets, one for me, one for you, yep. to split if we want anything. Here's a fucking shocker. We went over. Uh, it happens. It happens all the time. Um, I so I've been gambling my whole life. Love to gamble. Played a lot of poker in my life. I play blackjack. Me and Maggie go to the casino once a month. Yeah. Play slots and just dump money in there. Right. I just like to do it. I like to gamble. I'm aware that I'm I'm aware this money is not like for fucking. Now, there are people that aren't. Like I remember being a Mohegan one time, dude. And there was oh, it was Foxwoods. There was a guy in a fucking like a like a service jacket from like a garage, mm-hmm. like full of grease. <laughs> guy walks in, takes eight hundred eight one hundred dollar chips, spreads it on a number each and roulette over out. Just looks at the table with this blank stare. <laughs> it was a Friday, smoking a cigarette. I remember thinking like that was that guy's check. Like yeah. that was most of his check. Like, yeah. And uh, I was just like, oh, fuck, that is fucking gross. That sucks. You know what I mean? Like, so I want to put it into terms. Like, I've never put myself into a situation, like, where I'm like, oh, fuck, I owe the bookie yep. three grand, and I have one grand in my bank account. Like, yeah. that's not for me. That's never you know a I mean? good idea. No. Um, and I, in fact, I probably, if I bet football games now, I bet the same amount I bet when I was 23. Like, I bet, like, max, usually 100 bucks a game. Unless right. I get, like, up big on something. And mm-hmm. if I hit, like, if I'm down, like, two or 300, like, I pay it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't have a lot of crazy hobbies. You know, mm. well, that's not true. I do play guitar and all this shit. But, like, I don't have a boat. I don't fucking fix race cars. I don't have fucking mountain bikes. You like playing shit. with money. I like playing with money. I like playing guitar. That's what yeah. I like to do. All right? Um, Doesn't make you a bad person. Bro. I don't think it makes me a bad person. But it's a, it's definitely, like, a common theme. Like, my mother likes to gamble, right? Like, same. Like, nothing nothing crazy. Yeah. Maggie loves to play slots. Like, yeah. She's just a slot addict. Uh, we got a different name for that, slot sluts, but uh, I never call my wife that. But uh, so uh, I love to gamble. Let's put it that way. I spent a good majority of my childhood at a fucking racetrack. Yeah, and like I had a blast like watching it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Even like not using my own money, but as a kid, like picking a fucking horse or an umbo. You know what I mean? That was my shit. Well, dude, it's like it's just like okay. You know they say like the things 
like, say you have a, like, all right, me and Maggie going to Nashville on December 1st, right? Yeah. For our anniversary. That's like something that I'm looking forward to doing, yeah. right? So it's like, it's like, have that in the calendar. We're going to go there. It's going to be fucking great. And then we're going to come home, right? Gambling is like miniaturized versions of things to look forward to. Mm-hmm. It's like you buy a scratch ticket, you're like driving home, and you're like, hey, I'm going to fucking scratch this ticket when I get home. Right. And it's just something to do, right? It's like the race is, the, is just a longer version of it. It's like, Absolutely. all right, we got fucking these horses. Let's yep. do it. Like, and there's actually, and as far as, you know what's funny? Horse racing, and I've gone to, I've actually been to them in Ireland too. It's actually like, one of the cheapest ones you can do. Like, yeah. you can go out there do three dollars exact as everything yeah. else and like just drink beers and hang it's out. It's the best. Yeah, it's great, dude. It's the, and great. people that are like, to use the word loosely, degenerate gamblers that are fucking smacking the books. Oh, yeah. It's the best people watching you and oh, having your it's, life. It's awesome. It's In awesome. your life. It's awesome. There's nothing better. Yeah, it's awesome. You want to talk about fucking betting the mortgage on my ponies. Oh, yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Not so good if they don't win, but no. when they do win and they fall, oh, it's a great, great experience. Uh, <laughs> Highly suggest if you haven't bet. Dude, we, we first time I ever bet horses was we were down at Foxwoods. All my college buddies got together. This was like the year we got out of school. Yeah. So we went down to Foxwoods. Like, we were so young we couldn't even rent a room because I think you had to be 24 to rent rooms at that time. That's right. So, like, we all drove down, and we were, like, just kind of taking it easy. We drove. But, like, we were, like, kind of playing, trying to find a blackjack table, but we were all together. We hadn't seen each other in a long time. So, like, my buddy's like, let's just go fucking play the horses. So me and my buddy O'Malley, who was in Ireland, I'm like, what do you want to bet? He's like, he's like, let's, he's like, because his dad used to bet horses all the time. He's like, let's take this, this horse to show. And I'm like, all right, cool. And so I'm like, uh, I can still remember the name of this horse, Stormy Cherokee. Never fucking forget this horse. <laughs> because we put 100 bucks on it to show, and we won like 750 bucks. And like, you walk back over there, like, holy fuck, right? I'm pretty good And at my this. buddy's like, my buddy Dustin's like, what'd you put on that horse? And I'm like, we put 100 bucks. He's like, dude, he's like, you put Five bucks on horses. <laughs> you put a hundred dollars on a horse to show. I'm like, it worked out. Yeah. Fucking great. It's not a bad charity. one. So I mean, yeah, I, I've done, dude. I've done a fair amount of that horse game. But it is that thing. It's like you, you just, it's something to be like. It's like a fucking. It's just another type of like drug in a way. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a little bit of like a pop of fucking serotonin I get that it. you get out of your, that you get out of your thing. You know what I mean? And like I like whenever like when you're doing something like that, like you are, like it's uh. You're just ultra, like, in the zone when you're doing that. That's why I think people get addicted to gambling is because, like, especially for people who probably have, like, mental shit going on, it's like, it's like you aren't thinking about anything else. You're, right. like, you're in that fucking, like, zone, you know? Well, you're, you're waking up every day thinking you're going to become a millionaire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, that's not the case. Yeah. And, dude, I have, I, I mean, I'm sure you know them, too, but, like, I got to have ten stories about kids I know that, like, one three grand on the book one week, and then like next thing you know, they're in a payment plan through their dad to like yep. pay the guy back. You yep. know what I mean? Like I, I but like I, I knew a kid. This is pretty funny. Total fucking, total fucking ridiculous person. He won like three grand one week. We were like all living like in Medford, and like he went out and bought a fax machine, a kayak. Those are the two things he bought. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I would buy too. And like then he bought like some like new tires for his car, and then like the next week he lost like four grand. He's like, I don't have it. <laughs> So fucking ridiculous, dude. Uh, but anyways, so the lottery. Powerball was $2 billion. Did you play it? Of course I did. Yeah, obviously. Now, I don't play it. Like, it is funny that you say, like, that. Like I'm the same way. Like, I don't play it, usually. Right. But, like, no, I don't either. You know, when, when it's really rocking, if it's you, you want to get it. $2 billion, dollars, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw my hat in the ring. Yeah. But, like, what I think is funny is that, like, you do get this thing where it's, like, you start talking about, like, all right, what would I do with the money? You know what I mean? Like, what, was yeah. it, what would you do with it? And, like, it cracked me up because I was watching the news with Maggie, and this woman's like, they're like, what would you do with the money? And she's like, she's like, well, first thing you got to do is you got to set up trust. And I'm like, this lady is talking about it like, like it's, it's something happening. is happening next yeah. week. She's like, she's like, well, I mean, this is what you got to do, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, this is what's happening. I mean, head completely up her fucking ass. Let yeah. me give you a list of things that are more likely to happen than you winning the Powerball. You Please. ready? Please. Being crushed by a meteorite. These are good fuck. <laughs> That's how I felt. Today, or yesterday, <laughs> I would ru- I would much rather that happen. Being killed by hornets. Oh, poor my girl. This is the one that blew my mind. You're more likely to have conjoined twins than win the Powerball. <laughs> by the way, it brings me to conjoined twins, something we've never talked about on this show. Yep. Uh, I just got to know, like, it's just going to be a, I mean, they get married. like and Total then, mind fuck. What is happening? Yeah. You know what I mean? like. And then there's, like, people that, like, they're conjoined twins, and they, they go out with conjoined twins. Yeah. Like, what is... I mean, That's something you would see on like the National Enquirer, dude. Dude, can you even imagine like if you're like if you had a conjoined twin, and you're like, 
all right, I want to fucking, I want to crack stick right now. And this kid's trying to fall asleep. And you're like, dude, I got to do it. I'm fucking ready to go. Like, I mean, I, I, I mean, no secrets. We got to unload the chamber. Yeah like, yeah. like I'm fucking, I'm like a powder keg. Yeah. Right? Explode over here. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me blow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do think about and that. And the other kid's be... got fucking like the worst head cold ever. Yeah. yeah. Like, can you just wait cold? like an hour? <laughs> yeah. You're just like, uh, melatonin's about to kick in. Just let me fucking fall asleep. He's like, oh, fucking Jesus jerk Christ. Off. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, um <laughs> that's <laughs> fucked. Uh but like I think about it cuz Powerball lottery whatever. I mean, I, I just think to myself like it's so slim of a chance that you could do but it's it's funny that like people get so they get fucking obsessed with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like dude, there was like there was an interview. Now, Asians are well known like Gamblers. Top draft pick. Of, Top they have their own pick. rooms at casinos. Do they have their own rooms, like, with the games, the crazy eights, like, yeah. everything. Like, actually, one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life is, there's that group of, I've told this story with these guys before, but this group of um, Cambodian guys, the rice baggers, yep. that play corn a lot of lol. And there's this kid, Chanta. Chanta's Cambodian, but he's not, like, part of this crew. He's just, like, a kid from Lynn who happens to play corn Yeah. And, um... One day, this kid, Shorty, who's, like, part of the rice baggers, talking to Chanta, he's like, who do you like in the in four o'clock games? And I'm like, I like the Giants. And Chant is like, I don't gamble, I don't bet football. And Shorty looks at him and he goes, You fucking Cambodian? <laughs> he goes, Yeah, he goes, You fucking gamble? Like it was like he it was like he was like, yeah. that eye, your eye, left eye is fake. Like that was like how <laughs> shocked he was, dude. Like it was fucking crazy. Um, number one draft picks, right? They had a guy on at that, whatever that crazy lottery store is up in like Methuen. You ever seen this place? Yes. Okay. Yes. When they showed it, Maggie's like, that's not a that's not a Grocery store, that's a fucking betting hall. Like, yeah. it's just all lotto tables yep. like, set up. They were interviewing this guy, this Asian guy, and he was like, basically, like, I'm in too deep. They're like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, I, I, I got to win. Like, I, I'm, they're like, how much are you putting on it? He's like, 400. Like, fucking blow your mind. Yeah. Dude. Like, and you see him, dude. I see him all the time with a lot, like, <laughs> my buddy, like, this guy lives in the street, Dave. He's a fucking massive, lot, like, scratching a guy. Yeah. And somebody hit a million at the corner market like a couple years Pissed ago. Pissed him off. And, oh, and I go, I go, dude, Dave, I'm hoping that was you. And he goes, fucking not. He goes, probably some fucking loser. <laughs> He's probably right. You know what I mean? He's probably right. some fucking person who didn't need it. Um, I think I might have mentioned this on the show before when uh, I had to go do a, a shutdown at a restaurant in Chinatown. Yeah. And it was just oh, loaded. Yeah. yeah. With It was an illegal <laughs> casino. <laughs> dude. I can't tell you, like, how uncomfortable I felt. Because, like, I wanted to, like, find out what was going on, but I was the only Caucasian in the building. Yeah. And it was ludicrous. Yeah. Like, the amount of chain smoking, number one. Asian, it goes Asians, they love gambling, and then chain smoking right after And then that. wearing masks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well documented. The Asians love to gamble. Nothing against you. You guys are pretty good at it, or you at least think you are. Oh, you have a lot of fun doing it, which I do, too. For sure. Uh, who knows? I mean, I could be part Asian for all I know. But I, I fucking love I remember the very first time I went to Foxwoods, and I was like, is that all? The whole room is Asians. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. Like, you walk in there, and they're like, oh, no, no, no. no. Yeah. 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 This isn't for you. <laughs> um, anyway, so, but like, so I was looking at, like, you know, you see all the lottery stories. Like, like I looked a bunch of them up today. Like, people who won the lottery, and then their life just fucking falls apart, right? All right. So, not so much Powerball, but it's still gambling related. Have you ever seen the documentary McMillions? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. About the uh about the scam. Dude. Yeah. How mad would you be? Like oh, if you've been playing it the whole time and you didn't know it was unwinnable. Dude. I know. Which I did. You know what I mean? Everybody I went to McDonald's did. every fucking day and I yeah. grabbed the lodge fry and I was like, I need Broadway. I already yeah. got Pac Place, give me Broadway. Yeah. Fucking scam the whole time, dude. If you haven't seen McMillions, dude, it's awesome. Watch. It's on HBO, I think, right? Uh, or Netflix? HBO. It's on yeah. HBO for sure. It's fucking, it's phenomenal. By the way, I'm pretty sure I got fucked over today. Like, Tommy turned on the TV. And like I said, I was, I had a two day today. Like, I was still, like, I was like, am I sick or am I just hungover? I was yeah. hungover. Um, <clears throat> Tommy, like, flips on the TV after school. He's like, what, what's going on with Disney? And I'm like, what? He's Again? like, yeah, he's like, I'm like, oh, you need to put the password. He says you need to restart the account. So I'm like, I just signed up for it again. Yep. Like, I probably have five Disney accounts right now. Like, I have no idea. It's like 80 bucks a year, done, whatever. Yep. Take my money, leave me alone. Um, <laughs> so I, lo- like I said, I, well documented, I love gambling. Um, but I do think it's interesting because, like, I thought about this a lot when I went to Disney World. Now, I found out there's a hack around this, so I'm going to say this. But, like, they're great equalizers in life, right? And they're, like, <clears throat> there are things that you kind of, like, I'll give you an example. If you're rich as fuck, and you go to Camby Lake Park, 
you might as well be everybody else because there's no special treatment at Canby Lake Park. Right. You are with the people. You are amongst the people, yep. right? The lottery does not discriminate. It doesn't care if you're Asian, white, Hispanic, poor as fuck. Now. Take all your money. <clears throat> I always play, when we play, when we do the Powerball, we have a group of guys that do it around the around this neighborhood. They, my fans football guys, right? Mm-hmm. And the theory being that, like, I would never, I think there would be nothing worse in a way. There's a lot of things that could be worse. But, like, it would be shitty to be super fucking loaded. Like, I'm talking, like, billion dollars, whatever. And not be able to and, share it with anybody? Well, and, like, and, like, you're the guy who's just loaded. Yeah. Because there's a bunch of things. First of all, the friends you have in life, generally speaking, are making within a similar amount of money as you are, mm-hmm. right? You just, like, you know, you know, I'm not going to Capitol Grill when you're going to 6 to 1. Right. I'm going to 6 to 1, so do you, right? Yep. <clears throat> when you get to, like, a point where you're, like, you, all of a sudden you're just a bajillionaire for no reason other than the fact that you picked a quick pick, mm-hmm. Right. First of all, the real rich people is who you need to be your friends because they can do the shit you can do. Right. They don't want you. Right. You're a trash person to them. Yep. You're like, you're not, you're, you're not a real billionaire. You're not a real rich no. person. You're right. a fucking loser. Yeah. You're, you are, you won the comp. You're still basically. wearing just white t shirts. Yes. Like, you are a piece of shit. Yeah. Right. So then you have to like figure out what you are going to do with the money. So I do think like if you had 10 guys or like whatever, your family, for example, mm-hmm. like where you're like, all right, everybody's going to get 20 million bucks. Like that would be your best thing. Even if it was a 4 million bucks, 5 right. million bucks, that would be your best situation because yeah. it's like, now you get at least got people you could do shit with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the last thing you want to do is like fucking be stuck in a situation. This is what, by the way, this is what I love about the lottery. I was just making fun of that lady on the fucking TV for talking about what you got to do. And I'm talking about it like it's real. That like it's really going to be a problem for me. You know what I mean? It's but, like a fantasy shit that you every, like. But here's the thing. Because every, it can happen. Yeah. But every time you play the Powerball, mm-hmm. you look at that ticket and you're like, this is the winner. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. This is going to change my life. Have you ever seen the movie uh, Waking Ed Divine? Ah uh, yes, ah yes. It's like one of my fucking favorite Great Irish movie. movies. It's probably, Anyways, if you, I, actually in that movie is my favorite Irish song ever, "Potting Glass." Potting Glass is in you know in that version, that and, version. Of yeah, that song. you know what else is in there? That speech of the. But if you haven't seen the movie "Waking Ned Divine," yeah. When we hit March of this year, yeah. Get on Amazon, rent it. It's fucking awesome. Great movie. There's an unbelievable speech at the end about uh, whatever. You, you just watch the movie. I'm yeah. not going to fucking repeat a movie for you. <laughs> um, no, but like you, it would kind of suck to be like rich. All of a sudden, for no reason, and you got a million people coming at you for shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Because I mean, you just wouldn't know, like... All right, let, I'll give you an example. If I came to you tonight, after this mic's off, and I'm like, listen, I need a fucking favor. Can you lend me 500 bucks for two weeks, and I'll give it back to you? You'd be like, yes. Right. And the reason you would be like... And if you did the same to me, I would almost be like, semi-feel like, feel like, all right, you know what? You trust me as a friend to be, like, in a tight spot. 100%. That's like a almost a compliment. Yep. Right? Whereas like if you just have people come up being like, dude, I want to start this company, can you give me a million? You have 50. Right. You can't give me a million? Right. That's how you'd be treated. Yeah. And you really wouldn't know like what people's motivations were. No, they they just think it's a, a free bank account at the end of the day. So basically what happened was they moved like with all the basketball players and shit, right? Yeah. This happened to people all the time. Do you want another Coke? Sure do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at this fucking. At a meeting later. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, with all the basketball players, all the football players, everybody, like they got a. After that kept happening, where they were just blowing their money, Antoine Walker and fucking Iverson, mm-hmm. they pretty much like instilled things in the league. They put money managers in there to be like, all right, <clears throat> this is how you fucking handle your money. You're not gonna be in this league forever. You need this like here's where you put it. Here's what you do right with it. Are people still getting scammed? Shit, I'm sure they are all the time. Absolutely. Right? Wherever there's somebody with money, there's a guy trying to get it from them. That's mm-hmm. a fact. Now. There's nobody for the lottery people. There's nobody coming that, or there is, but they're probably trying to get that money. But like, there's nobody, like, the lottery is such a fucking, the government's a scam anyways. But the fact that they're like, all right, you can't do this, but you can do, you can bet all your money on the lottery, right? Yep. It should be within the fucking states and the government to put, put a fucking executive office in, in there to be like, go to that guy's house and be like, listen, do whatever you want with the money, but this is how you can make that money last. Put it in this fucking 401k, this thing, that thing, and this will give you 200, look, 300 grand a year for the rest of your life, right? right? There's ways to do that. But what people do is they blow their fucking shit. Oh, yeah. And they're like, dude, you get, like, a lot of these stories that you, like, they just lose a people that end up getting the ticket. Mm-hmm. So it's like, trash, you know, you can change yourself a little bit, but you kind of have an operating system. You know what I mean? Like, I kind of am who I am at this point. Right. You know, like, for better or for worse, right? I got some great qualities, I got some bad qualities. Um, but, like, if you are just a piece of trash, 
And then you give me, if I'm a piece of trash and you give me $20 million, I mean, how do you think that's going to go? You're going to do some trashy shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of trashy <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tons of trashy shit. Uh, so I don't know. I, I think it's interesting. I think it's like kind of like that thing Kid Rocks at that time where he's like, there's nothing worse than being famous and broke. Like, it's kind of like being rich and like, you're not supposed to be rich. You know what I mean? Like, there's like a... So I, I'm with you, right? So everything in life has a counterweight to it. 100%. Um, but I do the same thing. Fire as Powerball, me and the family all get together. And then we all, we're in a group text. And we're like, all right, here's what we're doing. We're going to go on a fucking family trip. We're going to do this. Everyone's going to get a piece of the pie. Yeah. Because it really is. There's nothing worse if you're the only rich friend, dude. Yeah, it sucks. Imagine that. You have all the money in the world and people, you like, no one wants to be around you because you're the only rich friend. Well, or, or, they, or the other thing around where it's like, all right, think about it this way. I'll give you an example. Let's say uh, I won Powerball last weekend or whatever it was. And I'm like, all right, and now I get my money or I'm getting my money. And I'm like, Max, let's fill up fucking two planes. We're going to take everybody down to fucking Aruba for a week, right? Yep. How many people do you think that didn't get to go on that trip would be like, Fucking motherfucker. Bullshit. That guy's a piece of, piece of shit. I thought we were pals. Yeah, I thought we were boys. What's yep. fuck? You know what I mean? Like, you gave him this. You don't give me that. Like, yep. And, like, I'm the type of guy, like, by nature, that, like, I can see how you could get into trouble with it, especially if you weren't, like, an educated person at all. Like, if you, like, had a ninth grade education and somebody's like, can you just give me 200? And you're like, what is it? What does it even fucking matter? Like, yeah, right. I just want this guy to be happy. You know, just get out of here, you know? Like, it happens. Like, this one was, here's one that actually... Oh, by the way, this is another thing you have more chances. This is one blew my mind. More of a chance of this happening than the lottery. Dying from <laughs> dying from being left-handed and using a right-handed product incorrectly. <laughs> chance of happening, 1 in 4.4 million. This is not a joke. It turns out around 2,500 people every year die from being left-handed using a right-handed piece of equipment like a chainsaw or like a circular saw that's made for a right-handed person. I never even fucking thought about that, dude. Like, Imagine that. Oh, is there any worse way to fucking go than that? I'm mostly a lefty, too. Yeah, I was so going to say, yeah, yeah. How do you use your tools? Uh, it all depends. It, really, it all depends. On, which, on what it is? Yeah, like a bandsaw. Like, I use a, port a portable bandsaw. Yeah. I use that lefty. But, like, a hammer, I'm righty. Yeah, so you're exactly like my dad's the same yeah. way, you know. So it, it just all depends. Oh, by the way, I got to tell you, uh, we'll, we'll do it now. I might as well do the fucking leading ad, a.k.a. the title sponsor of the show, Lily P's Hot Chicken. Lily P's Chicken in... Cambridge, Mass., 50 Benny Street. Chris Parsons, executive chef, man, myth, legend, great guy, creator of an unbelievable menu full of things like shishito peppers, oh. which I would, I would trade a winning Powerball ticket for <laughs> a plate of those. Um, <clears throat> check them Jokes out. Jokes on you, though. The Powerball ticket is only like 14 bucks. Yeah. Check them out. We're going to do something there within the next couple of months, like watch a game or something like that. We'll figure yep. something out. Have a bunch of people over there. Uh, place is awesome. I've been going there on Tuesdays. I just want to tell you, there's a guy... There's a guy who comes by blue, uh, the Bluegrass Night, yep. and he plays mandolin, and he fucking wears a fucking bow tie. And he's, like, my age, and I'm like, uh, this guy is obviously a fucking legend, because yeah. the only other guy I know who does that is my old man. Is is he an absolute beast on the mandolin? Uh, he's all right. He's getting yeah. there, you know? But he's a, seems like he's a kind of a beast of a dude, you can tell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> anyways, <clears throat> back to what I was saying. My dad does the same thing as you. He does different things lefty and righty. Yeah. Like, he plays golf righty, but that was just because he couldn't get lefty clubs when he was learning. So, I play, as you know, I play golf lefty, yeah. hockey lefty, shoot righty in basketball, I throw righty, bat lefty. It's fucked up. It's funny because uh, my youngest, Addie's the same way. She does, like, different things with each hand. You know yeah. what I mean? So, special people. That's what we are. Legends, you know? Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I thought that was interesting that, like, people, 2,500 people die that way each year. <laughs> you know what I mean? It goes to show you, too, by the way, as we're talking about the lottery, it's like... <clears throat> I don't know. Like, I, I think you got to, like, you really got to live your life as full as you can because you're really not here for that long anyways. No, you know what I mean? But, that, I mean, that's why when it gets up to that, you, what the fuck? You're going to waste two bucks on a no, ticket? I mean, you're you just fucking whatever. I mean, I, anybody who's, like, throwing money away, it's like, wah, wah. Yeah. Debbie Downey, yeah, you have fun you, fucking taking a party. Wicked good time at a party. Yeah, great fucking time at a party. <laughs> uh, let Wall me ask you a question, though. What? Give me three things you'd buy right off the rip. I would buy an NFL team. Can you buy an MLT for that much money? Yeah, I would. Just buy them. <laughs> get it, get it, get a piece of the. Get it in like McConaughey's bid. Yeah. All right. Nice. I, I, I would buy an NFL team or like some sports team. Maybe not an NFL team. Maybe like a CFL team or something. Something. Yeah. Like just somewhere I could be like, all right, boys, go on. You probably buy like the boss, the Brockton Rocks or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fuck. Yeah. Uh, so I'd buy that. Buy, they buy really, really quick. I was at the Pats game with Tommy. There was this black kid behind us, big dude yeah. with cornrows, and he was like, funny dude. 
And he's like, oh, man, he's talking about the football game. He's like, he's like, oh, you got to hit him out of that. He's like, and the girl's like, oh, where'd you? Because he looked like he was fucking, like, he was a big dude. Yeah. She's like, do you play football? He's like, he's like, yeah. And I'm like waiting for him to say like that he because like he said something about college and and uh, she's like oh wait he's like I played for the Haverhill Hitmen and I'm like dude you know playing a fucking adult fucking league semi pro yeah yeah I played <laughs> so against that's what, that's what I'm gonna buy the Haverhill Hitmen <laughs> <laughs> well thank God now he's gonna grade on them yeah there you go um I definitely buy a crib I mean obviously I, but I, like I, like would you buy it in Malden and knock down like two houses and no create, so like, a it, fucking see I knew you were like gonna go there but like. I'm like stuck in my way, so I would I would definitely like leave Malden. Yeah, but I don't think I'd leave like the Boston area. No, of course not. I don't want to go to fucking L.A. No, I'd, I'd probably get a house down there, you know, just to, for shits and giggles. Yeah, yeah, but I, dude, I'm all about food, and we have the best food I in the agree fucking with you. world. I agree with you. I would not. There's, I wouldn't leave Melrose. Uh, I, I, Winchester, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, you somewhere know, around. There. I'd fucking I'd still be 15 minutes away somewhere. Yeah, exactly. But I I don't know if I would. I'd have all the. The bells and whistles. I'd have an indoor pool. I'd have a fuck. I'd have the whole nine. But I just, yeah, I motors. I'd be fucking roller coaster. I'd have the whole nine. <laughs> roller but, coaster. Yeah, but I, I don't want. I wouldn't leave the Boston area. No, never. And it's, and it's honestly be, like I don't give a fuck about foliage. I don't give a shit about any of that. Other than the fact that I know that we have the best food on earth. Yeah, like I, I just like we've talked about this before. I, I couldn't stomach the idea of like not being able to get Saugus wings on New Year's Day. With That's you. what I mean. I couldn't stomach the idea of being like. Like I always, we I always talk about like we're gonna move to Hilton Head, but like when we get older, like mm. I'm never moving. Right. Like uh, maybe I would be if I hopefully was in the financial position to buy a place down there and go down there when it's cold. Maybe yeah. I'd do that. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, I mean it's like cold keeps you fucking honest right. up there. You know what I mean? I, like I couldn't agree like right more. now my feet are cold because I don't have the main heater on right now. Yeah. I like it. Fuck, it makes me meaner <laughs> than I usually am. You know? I'll tell you what I would buy. There's a seventy-two thousand dollar guitar at uh, Music Emporium, Martin, nineteen thirty-eight D eighteen. Uh, I would buy that. I, I told the guys that were in the thing, I go, let me know what the number is tomorrow because I told the guy put it on hold for me. Um, I would honestly just buy shit like that. Like, I don't think, I'm not like a, uh, my sister or my parents probably listen to this and be like, yeah, it's full of shit. Like, because I used to have like a sick watch and shit. I thought I was a person who liked lavish things, but I got a couple of really nice things and it didn't make me happy. Like, Same. it doesn't make you happier to have a fancy watch. It doesn't make you happier to have a fancy car. In fact, I also made this point to somebody. I'm like, you know what the fact is? More people are going to call you a dickhead for having that shit than are going to be like, oh, that's sick. Right. You know what I mean? It's like it's like dick measuring shit. So I, back in high school, I like saved up and I bought myself a rose gold chain. <laughs> like, it was badass. Yeah, yeah. Right? But it was like, I wore it for maybe a week and then I sold it. Really? Like, I'm not, a, I'm not a jewelry person, like, in the least. A watch, when I'm out. Yeah, I'll wear a watch, yeah. but like I, you'll never see me with rings or fucking bracelets. No, but like I, I, like I don't know, like I, like what I would probably spend my money on is probably like, like I said, I'd get, I'd have a house here. Yeah, I love it. Like I said, talking about the shit like it's real, like a fuck, it's a sickness. <laughs> it's in your soul. It's it gets you, but it's, it's fun. It's fun to talk about. It is. It is fun to talk. And I have a house down in Hilton Head. Yeah, and I'd have a house up in Maine. And like that's probably what I would have, like on a lake or something like that, like big yeah. fucking pad with like a yeah. golf range and fucking Hell yeah. be a rage to fucking for days. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like I'm not even like I would probably get a boat, just yeah, just to say I had a boat. Yeah, you're a boat guy, big boat guy. You have a guy drive it. For I already too. know what the name of it would be called. What Section Eight? <laughs> I love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> get a little fucking get a little yeah. Fucking Newland Street special. That's it. I would I would uh, I don't know. Do I hire a fucking captain or I just wing it? I think you can. Uh, I think you can hire a guy who could like who can do everything for you. Yeah, so I would you know do that. I, mean? I just you know bring him out on the weekends because I, I heard I heard the, the story about you know Granky, uh, the pitcher there. Is that Granky? Yeah, yeah. So he had a somebody told the story about where he, they went to his house. It was like another player, and like he's like, uh, I want to want to order some food. It's like Uber Eats, and he's like, No, no, I got it. And like calls fucking all this like guys like an hour, 40, 20, 20, 30 minutes later, there's a guy there with all this fucking shit. And he's like, oh, did you get, did you just use your Uber Eats? He's like, he's like, no. He's like, the first time I did Uber Eats from this house, because Zach Greg's like a really weird guy, I guess. Yeah. He's like, I, the guy who came, I really liked him. And I just said to him, like, can you just be my permanent Uber Eats guy? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, here's my cell phone number. He's like, so that's my guy. I just, I just text him and I pay him a certain amount each week. And he's my, who's my permanent Uber Eats guy. That's hilarious. He's just on his payroll. Like, <laughs> that's how much money he has. He can just be like, you're on my fucking payroll. Like, you're, you're my fucking Uber Eats guy. That's you know fucking I mean? hilarious. I do think there's a thing where it's like, would you, get your, against, would you get your own chef? No, I don't like other people in my fucking space, dude. I don't like other people, like, being in my house. I don't care how nice and how big it is. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't mind if, like, if I had a huge house with, like, different wings and shit, like, I wouldn't mind, like, if, like, you know, 
whatever. My friends want to, you want to come there? You can stay in the fucking wing. Right. You know I mean, you can be my kitchen. <laughs> like some guy who I don't know, like in my fucking house, get out of here. I don't want you in my fucking house. I'll cook my eggs. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want you in my fucking spot. See, I think I would want a chef. You just, think so? Just for like big dick measurements. You know what I mean? Just well, I mean, yeah, I mean. Big dick energy. It doesn't matter. I guess you could just pay the guy and when you want him, he can Yeah, him. but I, I mean, I'm not saying he has to live there, but like maybe just come there every single day and do and like shit. cook for you? Yeah. Yeah. The, see, the menu imagine, would be very simple. It'd be see, steak every day. When you say that, I'm imagining one more person in my small house, like yeah. taking up space, and I'm yeah. like that fucking. I'm like Jeffrey to... from Fresh Prince. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm, I'm, not, brain, I'm not saying that. He's I'm not, to brain this guy. No. You know, he can come brain. to my house every single day. Just you have your own house. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, here's one thing I want to talk about with the lottery. Speaking of lotto tickets, scratch tickets. We will get into this. Now, I, uh, we were texting beforehand. Chris Mohan is up in arms that he's not on this episode. He <laughs> says he's donated more. He's, he's got a phone call in. He's donated a lot. Um, I've only hit max 1,000 on the on, on a scratch ticket. Mm-hmm. I think I've done it twice. And it, actually, one time was perfect time. We were going to, like, Mohegan, like, the next weekend. So it was, like, money. I'm, like, perfect. Um, my brother-in-law's hit 10 Gs. Wow. Maggie's dad's hit 10 Gs. Um, now, here's the most depressing thing I can tell you about the lottery. I know a kid who, like, one year, New Year's, like, him and, like, five of the couples in the neighborhood split a fucking full roll of, like, uh, $20 tickets. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how many tickets that is, but it was a fucking shitload. There was a picture of it on Facebook at one point. And, like, I don't think they won shit. Like, I think he was like, dude, it was so depressing. He's like, I mean, we keep going back. Because you wouldn't, you know, say they spent two grand on the tickets that yeah. originally – they would win like eight hundred, then they yeah, go back you, and get eight hundred worth. You almost like, you almost get like it's like breaking even, because I I used to be in a scratch ticket pool, yeah, and that was the prize. <clears throat> Every guy I know, I'm like, what'd you hit? And he's like, nah, about the same as like what it's worth. Yeah, it's like it's like so it's infuriating. Yeah, yeah. because you think in your head you're like, well, if you got twenty, you got two hundred of them, you must Something. win a million, right? You know I mean? I, yeah, it's it's uh, I know a couple guys that have done that. Now I've also known a guy now. His name will be re- remain nameless, but he's a total another piece of shit. <laughs> he hit a million <clears throat> on a scratch ticket, and like five years later, his house got foreclosed on. Jesus. So, but dude, that. you can't change somebody's stripes. You know what I mean? Right. Like you, but if, I, you, if you're a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. You so know, like imagine having a, a million like back in like early two thousands. Yeah, that's a lot of money. That was like a good fucking chunk of change, dude. It's a lot of money. And your house got foreclosed on. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, it's a lot of money. But you know what happens too is like people just get dumb and they don't like. You just you, I don't know. And I also think there's probably something to the fact where it's like, you kind of feel like, you didn't really make this money. So like, what what the fuck? It's you know what I mean? Money. It's throwaway money, kind yeah. of. You know what I mean? It, like somewhere in you, you feel like you don't deserve it. Right. Like there's something like getting you to piss away. Well, I I know dummy. that I would be like I would have to like. Hire my brother full time as my financial advisor. I would have to. Well, he well he's already. I didn't tell you this. He's the latest addition to the show. He's actually the CFO yes. of, uh, of the program. Uh we we gotta. I would have to. He'd have to like sign, sale, delivered because he's yeah. good with money and I'm terrible. Oh, I'm like. And by the way, let me just point that out too. I am not by any stretch of the imagination some fucking wonderful money manager myself. Yeah. yeah. Um. <clears throat> anyways, let me read you about this woman. Okay. Denise Rossi. This is my favorite thing. This is for the Tom Brady fans out there. You ready? In 1996, a man named Thomas Rossi was shocked. By the way, how how good is my fucking reading voice? I should be doing this on audible.com and reading your books to you. Thomas Rossi was shocked to learn that his wife of 25 years wanted a divorce from what he believed was a happy marriage, and she wanted it fast. He later learned that 11 days before she demanded a divorce, she had won $1.3 million in the California lottery. He took her to court, and a judge ruled that Denise Rossi intentionally broke asset disclosure laws to hide the jackpot winnings. The judge awarded every penny of Denise's winnings to Thomas Rossi. Ah! Team Thomas Rossi all day. How awesome is that? Wow. Yes. How awesome is that? Fuck yeah, Fuck Tom. Denise. Denise yeah. fucking sucks. sucks. <laughs> How do you like that, Denise? <laughs> fucking, that's what you get, by the way. What is she that's doing right now? Scratch and scratch. She's probably out in the cold, and I'll tell you right now, it leads me to my next thing. If you're out in the cold this winter, you need to get your house insulated. <laughs> Insulation situation at gmail.com. <laughs> Our boy, Sean. Sean. Cash, as we like to call him. A uh, man of many talents, including the microphone and also comedy. Also uh, putting insulation in your house. If you own an Irish battleship, that shit is fucking basically taken care of, okay? 100% covered. 75% covered if you own a single-family residence. You've already been paying it to National Grid, Eversource. Those fucking motherfuckers, they're like the lottery people. They're just taking your money. Cock. This suckers. is when you can get something back. 
All right? <laughs> Talk to our boy at situation at gmail.com. And uh, Sean will take care of you. Also, by the way, Kristen Kennedy, who started listening to the show, who's the friend of Maggie's, who's friends with Sean's wife. Yep. Um, it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Kristen. Yes, it is. Listen, Happy birthday. Another, welcome another female corker to the team. That's what we do. I think it's time for the Lily Peas Hot Chicken Hotline. Let's do it. All right. We got some good ones here. We'll get some volume here. All right. Starting us off. Jesus Christ, Brendan, you knocked it right on the fucking head, kid. Yeah, you're, you're in Bill Ricca, you go to Jade Pacific, and you don't fucking reach out to me. The minute you said it, yes, that was my reaction. So you called it, congratulations, it's Monday morning, you already got me fired up. Happy fucking Monday, have a good week. And that is our good friend Paul Doobie. Paul Doobie. All right. Paul, next time I'm at a, uh Asian restaurant in Bill Ricca, you will be looked up immediately. <laughs> Hey, Gil, if you donkey, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you're on punishment for game day after your veteran state shenanigans. If I was Christy, I'd force feed you a nasty, dry Kelly's roast beef three-way with extra pigeon cum. <laughs> Let's get to it. The Irish are at the Naval Academy at noontime. I've taken Notre Dame the last two games and hit. And in their nine games, I'm 8-1 and one versus the spread. At this point, I'm Brandon Lang slash John Anthony and two for the money with McConaughey and Pacino. <laughs> So you think I'm going to fuck with the Irish for the hat trick? In the words of Lee Corso, not so fast, my friend. <laughs> Typical Notre Dame will lay an egg after beating Syracuse and Clemson. Plus, it's still Veterans Day week. Take the plus 17 and a half with the Naval Academy. Easy money. <laughs> P.S. Gilly, that 6-2-1 chili last night slapped, even though you ate half of mine. For paying the price on the golden throne, <laughs> I'm out. Bobby Frayo obviously met me. I was gonna say, yeah. I have a feeling that you were you were uh, in in cahoots. Yeah, yeah, we uh, me and Bobby met. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. And I just crushed his fucking chili. All right, we, we're gonna have a. I gotta preview this next one now. Jump Town apparently thinks that everybody listens to the show as part of the Crab Fear Mafia <laughs> and fucking roast beef page. We've talked about it a bunch of times. There's a roast beef, North Shore roast beef page. Great page. Join it. Get some laughs out of there. Craft Beer Mafia page is kind of in conjunction with it. I'm a little bit of an activity there, and then Danny's more in activity of North Shore beef. So if you want to see me funnel beers, go to Craft Beer Mafia. They're having a contest to funnel against each other. It should be no shock to anybody that, that Jumptown can drink a beer in about 1.2 seconds, <laughs> like a full 16-ounce yeah, fucking right. craft beer. It's pretty impressive. All right, here we go. Yo, it's your man Adam Jump Jump Town checking in from that Denali food truck once again. Listen, I want to talk a little bit about this chug off, a little bit about this North Shore beef versus craft beer mafia. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you right now, one time, maybe two times. The line. We need to get some money rolling in. We need to get some bets going down. We need somebody running the book on this one. I don't know if anyone out there on the lines listening, but hey, let's start working on it because rumor has it there, Brendan. 75 to 1 odds. Fuck. I don't know about that. Sounds a little low. But they got me. They got me. You know, what are they got me down there? 6 to 1. 6 to 1 for Jump Town. That's official on our books here. Uh, but you can come and check them anytime you want. Other than that, go fuck yourself, Jump Town. <laughs> I told you this, that last night I had like five people separately text or talk to me about Jump Town. He's an electric factory. My brother in law, Steve, was like, he goes, I hope my fucking email's on. Uh, you know why he's like, you know why he's 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 so electric on your voicemails? I'm like, why? He's like, because he knows how much you guys love him. I'm like, we do. Yeah. Yeah, fucking talent. It's no doubt about it. All right, here we go. Hey, what's up, you fucking leprechaun? I'm back. <laughs> I got a fraud. Serious fucking fraud. No free advertising. So American Airlines, you can get fucked. You want to charge me $500 for a one-way ticket? Then you want to offer me to upgrade to the main cabin plus, get six inches more fucking leg room for $38? <laughs> and then, and then when I check my fucking bag, my second bag, or first bag, whatever fucking bag it is, you want to charge me $40 for it. <clears throat> I don't have to overweight. You want to charge me another fucking $100 for it. $140 to get my fucking tools from point A to point B. I don't even have a ticket back to point A. Get fucked. There was 
wants a day where you just pick the fucking seat on the plane and you can be comfortable. Wing seat, front row seat. Not only do you have to upgrade for 58 fucking dollars <laughs> to main cabin plus, but now they want to charge you $70 for a fucking wing seat on top of it, $40 for a front row seat, $30 for an aisle seat, 45 for a fucking window seat. The only seats included with your airfare is a middle fucking seat. Who the fuck wants to rub elbows with every swinging dick in the fucking sky? Not me. I'm 6'2", 290. Get the fuck out of here. Fraud fucks. Cunts. Fuck them. They gonna lick my fucking balls. But I will still continue to fly. They pay all those fees because I'm throwing glue from coast to coast. Hide your women. Children are safe. Like your girlfriends, your moms, your wives, they are not. Get fucked. That is head of security. B.B. Hammers. B.B. Hammers. Who is... All of 6'2", 290. Who wants, who wants to ru- swing dicks? What do you see in the sky? <laughs> rub, uh, rub elbows with swinging dicks. Let me tell you right now, if if he sits down next to you on a plane, you are uh, like, I hope this guy's You're not nice. comfortable. No, I hope this guy's a nice guy. All right, we got two more. The lottery supporting our 351 cities and towns. It should be fucking Mohan supporting our 351 cities and towns. <laughs> Have a good night, fellas. <laughs> Uh, degenerate lottery guy. Admittingly. Admittingly. Chris Mullion. So I'm actually going to call and talk in a normal voice and not all like these other fucking idiots. <laughs> Can you guys just fucking talk? It's crazy. Anyway, anybody that eats Bella's beef in their car in their parking lot, fucking fuck. Come on, Dylan. You, you have to admit, you cannot go to Bella's or Lounge wherever you want to go eat it in the fucking car. I don't get all these people that eat beefs in the car. They're all rods. Hey, we got to tell you guys something. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Alright, that was my boy Scotty Moe. That was in reference to the fact that, like, a couple weeks ago, I think, or two weeks ago, I went to Bella's to get a beef, and I took a picture of it for the North Shore Beast page. Yeah. Because I'm not a video guy on there. I'm more of a, uh, <clears throat> just a picture guy. He was, like, on my ass. I was like, you ate that in the car? I'm like, dude... Like, I was the only one in the place. And I'm just not the type of guy who's going to sit in there and fucking... Start doing a review. Yeah, like, I'm just in whatever. So, uh, yeah, I ate it in my car and two seconds later. And you know what? It slapped fucking yeah. hard. It's fucking awesome. It's a great fucking roast beef sandwich. Fuck yeah. Um, I had one today, by the way, too. My hat hung off state from you Anthony's and Redding. Anthony's good. Um, it wasn't the best showing, but it was very serviceable for a, for a guy who was on his last leg. Who would have had a trash bag? I would have eaten, like, yeah, exactly. Like, just anything. Um... So, by the way, great, great voicemails. Keep the voicemails up. We yeah. love the fucking voice. Let's hear from the fucking people. Love it. Um, yeah. So I, I do think it would be a curse if you get fucking if you got if you won the lottery. You know so what I mean? like, have you ever have you ever done pull tabs? You would, do, do yes. they have them at the? I? Yeah. No, they don't. They don't. But they, I, I know places that still have them. Those are the awesome. So I all right. So the people at home who don't know what pull tabs are, and yeah. I don't know who that who you are, but you might live in the middle of nowhere and not know what they are. Right. Now, when I first saw these things, I thought they were part of the lottery. Because they were like, they sell them at VFWs all over the place. Right. They're mostly like private clubs uh-huh. where you'll find them. Basically, like a little scratch ticket type of thing, but you pull the tab back, mm-hmm. and it reveals like if you won something. 50 bucks I think the most you can win is up to 500. Right. And there'll be a, coming a box of like, say, I don't know, 800 of tickets or whatever. So I thought, I'm like, oh, it's a pie of the lottery. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, this is like a fucking moneymaker for the club. He's right. like, you know, the thousand bucks, thousand tickets, there's probably like, say there's 800 bucks in payouts in it. And, like, so they're getting 200 every time they run a fucking arena of these things. Right. They are super addictive. Oh, uh, exactly. They, you buy, we used they're to, a dollar a piece. So, non-disclosed location where I used to place cornhole, we used to run down and we'd grab some and, like, we'd be grabbing 10 at a time and be like, all right. Pff, pff, right. Pff, you know, in between games, just something to do. You know what I mean? They are degenerate as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is, like, some degenerate ass shit. Um, have you ever, now, this is also lottery, but Keno, right? Love Keno. Me and Maggie are, like. Our marriage is based on keynote. I've never hit for 450 ever. <laughs> we talked about this. Um, but when someone does hit for 450, nine times out of ten, fifty dollars goes to the person running the keynote, and they yep. usually get a round. Yep. I've been part of rounds often. Yep. But I have never once hit on my numbers. I've hit for 20 a hundred times. So the five numbers for the people like I think we've explained this a couple times, but yep. the people at home who might not have heard these. Like real quick, and I know the people who play Keno and Degeneres are like fast forward in this episode because they know yeah, how it's yeah, yeah. Five numbers are bad odds, but 
if you hit five numbers under five hundred, it's four fifty. So they cash you out right there, and you don't have to report it to the lottery. Right. I hit four fifty for five numbers, like with my buddy who hit four fifty for five numbers two games later when I was like 22, 23, and like it ruined my life because like <laughs> now I only play five numbers because yeah. I've had it like I've had that dope mean rush before, mm-hmm. and I had it happen last week. Me and Max were six twenty one. All of a sudden, I'd be like. I get four numbers already. It'd be like six numbers out. Right. I'm like, one more, I'm fucking hit one more. It happened like three times. Yeah. I was fucking like six to midnight. <laughs> Nothing. Zeros. Fucking air balls the rest of the way out. Um, most bartenders will tell you, like, play four numbers. Yeah. That, well, that's what I used to do, but four numbers is boring because it's, it's only a hundred bucks. bucks. I know. So I mean, I guess, sounds way I guess better. You, you could play three bucks a game or five bucks a game or whatever, but right. like, whatever. Um, I have hit that a bunch of times. I've, I used to play four numbers all the time, and I have hit the four numbers like yeah. a few times. Um, I mean, you usually lose. You know what I mean? Like, usually getting fucking smoked. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way Keno is. That's just, yeah. I told you the story, and, you know, like I said, this is the thing about a show like this. Like, some of these stories are going to get repeated. But I was on a train. I was, like, 22. 20, I was, like, 25. And there was a woman on there. And, like, I've been playing. I'm a degenerate gambler. I've been playing Keno fucking every weekend. So I was fucking 21. And she's, like, talking to this guy. She's, like, yeah, I, I was at this bar. And she's, like, I'd never gambled before. And I played eight numbers in Keno. And she hit, like, the fucking 30 grand or whatever Jesus. it was, or nine numbers or something like that. I remember just being like, I hope that when the door to this train opens, this woman falls out on the tracks. Like, fucking so mad. first time gambling. This happened, dude. And my, he, this guy might listen to the show. My fucking, our corporate fucking counsel, fucking Dave Lucas, my buddy's a lawyer. Yeah. I play slots all the time with Max. I'll just tell you right now. I'm a degenerate. Like, she got me into him. I like him. I like blackjack. I like it all. Yeah. I'll sit next to her all day and play slots and we have a blast. This motherfucker, we go to Mohegan. He's not a big gambler. He hits the fucking, like, major jackpot on the slot for like 1200 now he was like, I hope he fucking chokes on like his fucking steak remote. Like, <laughs> Michael ago. Jordan Steakhouse? Yeah, whatever. That's <laughs> rare. Um, but like, dude, some people do get luckier than other people. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Like, um, might have mentioned it on here before, but my buddy's mother did DraftKings. Yep. She bet like fucking first time ever. She won like 30 grand. Ugh. She doesn't know the first fucking thing about football. Dude, the best. She's picking I- up random numbers. I think I, mean, I ran- told random, this random I people. I think I've told the story, but I almost want him to tell it on the show, but. You know what? When he comes on, I'll have him. T- I'll tell well, when Paul Gentile, our CMO, yep. Central Marketing Officer, that is, who's rocking his pulling the cork uh, vest these days, that I gave him mine because uh, oh, I was waiting mine before I leave today. Nice, I'll get those. Yeah. Um, he has a he has a story that burned the house down that I was at. I was part party to. So uh, when he's on, I'll let him tell it because it's a fucking awesome story. Uh, but yeah, I just love gambling. I love betting on stuff. I love doing that. Um, anything with chance, I like. You know what I mean? Like anything that's like. What's, what could happen here? Right? right. I mean, and like the bigger the, you know, the bigger the payout, the better. But I don't know. I, I think it's like, obviously, you, you have to realize, obviously, casinos are in fucking business for a reason. Yeah. Bookies are in business for a fucking reason. You know what I mean? They're in business because, and by the way, you know what? Fuck that. I'm not going to say this, actually. Uh, <laughs> case, case. You know what? I'm going to retract that statement. Um, I didn't get it out of my mouth, but it almost came out. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. By the way, when we have a Patreon, we have bonus episodes. So the people who pay us like five bucks, ten bucks a month. Yeah. You'll hear that. You'll hear that one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, dude, I, I fucking, like I said, I mean, I love to, I love, I love casinos. They're exciting places to go. They are. Have you been to Uncle? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, but I'm not, I'm not like, uh, yeah, you don't strike me as a big, like gamble guy. No, but I, I will. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, like, if, like, like if you like, called me and you were like, let's go to Uncle, I'd be like, oh, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I, yeah. I'm just not like, uh, but I've been like, uh, like to your point, I've gone there. The first time I went there was with like mags and a bunch of our friends from this neighborhood and I didn't gamble. Like, so I don't have to, I'm not like a guy who gets there, I'm like, fuck, fuck, and I gotta yeah, give, yeah. give me the roulette table. Like, yeah. like I didn't, I didn't play a game. And I remember the guys were like, dude, you didn't bet? And I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling it. Like, I just wasn't the, like. The first time I went to Encore, it was the pre-opening. Yeah. It wasn't open to the public yet. And I got such a rush, because I they, every, everything was open. Yeah. So I went to the high rollers table and just watched people bet $10,000 a hand. It's crazy. Like nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, there's people out there that are fucking Loaded. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're just not them. Yeah. We're, it, we're like 10 bucks a hand, guys. You yeah. Know? And and I, it was just, it was exhilarating watching them just, hey, and lose it just like that. Yeah. And they're like, ah, we'll try the next table. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm Graham, just like that. It's crazy. Dude, I had a buddy who ran like an offshore, when we were like 23, 24, like we were like had no, like you barely had money to do whatever. Like we go on vacation like once a year to Myrtle Beach, play fucking golf. This kid ran a, his offshore betting Ooh. account to like 75 grand. Yep. And uh, was betting like five dimes a game, like five grand a game, easy. Crazy. And like we'd go down there and just spend it all. Like, he'd be like, he'd be like, 
fucking eat. Like, he'd take everybody else to eat. And he wasn't like, he was an awesome guy. Yeah. And he's like, dude, whatever. I just want it. Who gives a shit. Like, fucking spend it. You know what I mean? Like, let's fucking spend it. Um, I think he ended up getting a little bit of hot water at some point, but like, <laughs> he, he didn't bet anymore. But like, but it was like funny. Like, we were at Mary Ann's one time over by BC. Yeah. And he had like, like seven grand on a Duke game. And it was down to like the end. And there was this kid screaming about like fucking, like on the, like betting the other side. And, and, uh, and he's like, we were obviously rooting for Duke because like we want him to win fucking seven grand. Sure. Like, pick up the fucking tab, you know? Right, right, right. And this kid like kind of got into it with us a little bit. And I'm like, well, like, he's like, how much do you have on this fucking game, dude? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this kid's got fucking seven dimes on this right. fucking thing, you know? Back when $7,000 was like all the money in the fucking world. Right. I mean, it's still a lot of money, but like back then, like when you don't have anything but rent and like Pino's pizza to buy, like with <laughs> yeah, the money, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's a fucking shitload of money, you no, know? It's, uh, dude, that's to have throw away money like that. I'm, God bless you. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, listen, it's just that's why I love those games. Like, I always do it with like my kids. Like, I used to do it with my friends all the time. Like, would you rather, like, like, would you rather, <laughs> like, we used to do this game. This is so fucking ridiculous. And like, I know people are going to listen to this that, uh, that I know. Me and my buddy came up with this. I'm not going to mention his name because he may coach sports of youth nature. Um, we came up with this game one time. We were at the beer garden drinking in Southie back where that used to be there. And the game was that, like, behind two doors, it's, it's like a price, it's like a, was that Price is Right where, the, uh, where they have the three doors? Yep. All right, it's like three doors, and uh, behind each of those doors is fucking $10 million, except behind one door is a buck naked Wade Boggs, and you're going to pay him 10 grand to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then we would be like, when the door for Boggs would open, the whole crowd would go, Boggs! <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about that. I remember like Maggie was like, I just I just envisioned a hairy ass oh, yeah, yeah. fucking with a bat over shoulder <laughs> yeah. with his mustache, buck naked with a with his stirrups on, <laughs> and then like but they'd be like this week special guest star David Ortiz like fuck. <laughs> oh, so anyways, funny. I used to wear a fucking bogs t shirt all the time <laughs> like and then we would just die laughing about it constantly. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Maggie when we first told Maggie that she was like, "What is the fuck is wrong with you guys?" I mean, I would that's come up with that. that's. But if, if we're being dead honest, that stuff guys talk about often. all the time. Often. Plus, it's like, because it's like legit $10 million, <laughs> like 33.3%. The best part is you're going to pay him, though. That's the best part. You're going to give him 10 grand of your own money. To do it. <laughs> uh, that's a gamble I probably wouldn't do at this age. But uh, no. Yeah. No, it's interesting, dude. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I the lottery is fucking ridiculous. It, it, the, funny, the funny thing is that, like I was saying before, it's like the fucking goddamn fucking government in the States, they're fucking balls to be like, Oh, you can't do you can't bet sports, but you we're gonna take all your fucking degenerate money in the lottery. And I think I we said this on the show that the lady was talking about the the sports betting bill is kind of hung up because they're like, we don't want it to affect the lottery money that we're getting. People will just bet the sports. I'm like, you don't get it. People are degenerates. They'll bet both. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. Like fucking and by the way, don't blame everybody for using a bookie right now. You won't pass the fucking bill. You know what I mean? Like that's (laughs) it is what it is, you know? Um so what would you say the most you ever won in lottery? A thousand. thousand. Yeah. All right, so you had to go to the office. Yes. Like the lottery yeah, office? Yeah, yeah, twice. I think I, one time I won 1500 All right, so my buddy, co-worker, he had a $2 scratch ticket. I think he won two grand. He's like, we got to go to Wubin. We got to go to the, the lottery office. So there's a guy in there fucking ranting and raving. I just won a million dollars. I'm like, dude, that's fucking sick. You know, the retard couldn't fucking read the number. It was the wrong number. <laughs> Imagine going to the lottery office thinking that you're about to get a million dollars and then just for the guy to look behind plexiglass go, yeah, it's not even the right number. Dude, I told the story. I think I might have told the story already because we did talk about the lottery a little bit, but like Maggie's, some extended person in Maggie's family who did have money, so this wasn't as bad as like it would be for like me and you. Yep. Scratched a million, put it in a lockbox at the bank, went to Aruba, <laughs> fucking lived lavishly down there, came back, opened it up, took it to the lottery office. They were like, nope. Eh. Brick. <laughs> that sucks, dude. I told you the time I thought I scratched one. I was working on over and I had the wrong letter. I, 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 I was scratched a regular. Yeah, I was like, and I, I like was, I was like, I hated my life on this night. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I just scratched a million. She's like, no, no you didn't. didn't. I'm like, I just, you get, go get the 30 odd six out of the fucking base and put it in my fucking mouth right now, dude. Right now. But I don't think we got a good chance of uh, winning the lottery. By the way, we got some fucking sick shows coming up. Sure do. So, um, we got some guests. I know we've teased like a big show that is happening. I confirmed that. We got some scheduling difficulties that came up that we're going to uh, take care of. Um, but we have a bunch of good guests coming on. Yeah. That are, like some regular people, some not regular people. Right. Some people who've done some cool things, mm-hmm. right? Who now might be kind of regular people, but one time weren't. 
Yeah, I mean, like, it's going to be, yeah, you're going to yeah. fucking thoroughly enjoy these Yeah, and episodes. because this is not like the Howard Stern show where, like, we know they're definitely going to be here the next right. Sunday, like, because things come up in people's lives, right. like, I don't want to say the things that we right. have coming up. You know no, I mean? but as of right now, it should be next Sunday. Yes. Uh, at least one of them. And then I think in the following week, is that Thanksgiving? Um, that is Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's, that's going to be a good one, too. Yeah. We, that's already confirmed. We I know, know who we got. We got, yeah. we got, we got uh, official Bobber of... Pulling the cork. Yes. Uh, by the way, if you need to get, I, I'm going to give him a free, you go ahead, give him a free ad. Free ad. Uh, my man, John, actually all the guys at the Baba's Den in yep. Melrose, um, they're fucking dynamite Baba's. I fell in love with them because you could do online haircuts now. So I, uh, I've been going to him for the last four or five years now. He's my boy. He fucking golfs with us. Um, John at the Baba's Den, Melrose. There's one in Belmont. There's one in Somerville. John is my guy in Melrose. Go say what up to him. Yeah, he also cuts both of my nephew's hair. Yes. So, uh, and uh, does a great job. They love him. My sister thinks he's great. Um, he's also part of our Forever Foursome, as Forever I call it, Forsome, for, yep. uh, for the North Shore Beefs mm-hmm. golf tournament. Um, so, anyways, we got that coming up. We got another, we got some other good stuff. We're going to have, oh, December 11th, I think I could tease this because they said they were confirmed. Holiday? The holiday correspondence is coming back. Yes. Clocky and Fitzy. Yes. Going back to the show. Uh, we're going to talk all things Christmas and Thanksgiving with those guys. Yep. Um, and yeah, that's what's, uh, that's what's going on. So we're going to do it. And then we got a dude, we're getting to it's Christmas here. It's, do you know what the kids want for Christmas yet? Yep. I already got one of the gifts. Nice. I Kinda did happy. too. I did too. Kind of happy. I knocked out a big one. I did too. Yeah. I did too. I and I, and one. so here's the thing. So yesterday was my daughter's chair competition. Oh yeah. And, uh, they didn't make it, which I'm fine with because it's what it cost me fucking eight grand. Yep. Um, but they're not going, I thought that was going to be a big part of it. Like sure. taking everyone to Florida. So now I gotta figure something else out. Yeah, because <laughs> they're not going anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll I figure it out. But yeah. uh, that was gonna be like my my daughter's like big thing. Yeah, but no more Disney. Yeah, not this year. Yeah, I think we would. We can't. I, did I, get, I got my son's gift though, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. I got a. Um, I got my son. He's done. Uh, he's the boys are simple. They just like boys it's easy. Simple. Yeah. Maggie's about to buy a Taylor Swift tickets tomorrow, so if the bank comes to my house next week, you know what happened. <laughs> They'll all be Taylor Swift enjoying themselves. I'll be living on five fucking parents. Um, with a Powerball ticket. Yeah, with a Powerball ticket, just waiting for it to fucking come through finally. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. So, anyways, that I think that's good. Right? I think we're good? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, get your, get your fucking insulation at the insulation situation. After you get your hair cut at the Barber's Den by our boy John. <laughs> yeah. And then go over looking slick as fuck with a warm house and have yourself some fucking fried chicken <laughs> yes. and waffles from... Uh, from our boy and Chris the Shishito peppers and the Shishito peppers. Yes. All right, we're out. We'll be back next week. We're See going, you. boys and girls. Peace.